got a ton of pictures to go through today. Do we have anybody uh, new with us for the first time? Uh, Tom Morris, hey. <laughs> I owe you one of the joke last night. Uh, oh, I can't wait for the curfew to be lifted so I can meet up with Tom again. <laughs> again, Tom's uh, another retired Imagineer and uh, fan of the, uh, the World's Fair and all. So appreciate uh, folks joining us. Uh, I mentioned that, uh, Let's see, where did I put my box of tissues? Oh, you, you may want to have them. So <laughs> it, uh, it was a sad time. Um, like a lot of others that lived in the New York area, had the fun of watching the World's Fair go up. And then, uh, unfortunately, the uh, sorrow of watching it come down. And I still remember thinking these people are crazy tearing it all down. What are they doing this for? You know, it's surely the kind of the their senses, but one after another, after another, the pavilion started disappearing. So I have a ton of pictures today. I'm gonna to have to go through them at a fairly quick pace. Let me get them ready here. And uh, we will uh, be right with you here. Demolition, okay. So I'm gonna throw folks on mute. And if you have something, throw it in the chat and we'll try to get to it. So here, mute all. And Don, uh, if you need to unmute yourself, you should be able to as co-host. So let me get here into the first of the pictures. I will have to combine share screen. They make it so tough to earn a living with this, I tell you, share screen. And okay, this should do it. Okay, so we're into the final days of the World's Fair. They had been hoping for 70 million people to show up when they first started the event. Uh, they were only ending with uh, 50 million, so it left quite a uh, hole in the finances. So the World's Fair Corporation started putting signs up around uh, trying to encourage people to come into the fair. And you can see one of the signs here at uh, Shea Stadium mentioning more than 50 people have been there. Uh, it's gonna end real soon. Why don't you come and visit it? It was interesting, they put a sign up on uh, one of the highway overpasses and A. Beam, uh, the controller of New York who absolutely hated Robert Moses, immediately went into a big thing about this was an illegal highway sign, I'm gonna find you X million dollars a day that you have this thing up there. And Moses basically said, by the time you get through the courts, we'll be out of business, so go off and have fun with it. So the sign stayed up. But they did everything they could to try to encourage everybody to come at the end. And it turned out they didn't need the signs because boy, did people come at the end. So we're gonna start now with uh, October 16th, just one day to go before the fair shuts down for good. And I was not allowed to go the last week of the, the fair. My parents had seen what had happened when the 39 fair had closed and the pandemonium that came out. If you actually want to see things about how a World's Fair can be really wild on the last day, read the newspaper reports of the 1933-34 Chicago Fair, where people were getting thrown through plate glass windows and uh, bar fights like you couldn't believe. Luckily, 64 didn't turn out to be that bad, or 65 fair, but uh, they did have some issues. So here we go, the two days ago, um, the housewives were mentioning uh, online, you know, normally well-behaved people, they start ripping the fair to pieces. They're taking everything they can to get out. All these flowers were supposed to be going to things like nursing homes and hospitals, but people decided, no, I'm just gonna take them home. So they started filling bags of them, shoving them into their coats, not realizing that when they got to the gates to go home at night, the Pinkerton guards would say, you've got to leave that behind. And there were huge piles of dirt and flowers left at the, uh, the gates. But uh, I just got a kick out of these people thinking nothing at all about uh, just tearing it all apart. For a lot of people, they just went on their way. They went out for one last uh, chance to see Candy Johnson, this perpetual motion over there at the uh, Louisiana Pavilion. Uh, but man, as I mentioned, people did come. They didn't need the signs. Here's the Meadow Lake Bridge going there today. It's usually a ghost town. Uh, you hope when they put this thing together, they really plan their engineering because look how many people are on that bridge. Outside the Paris Pavilion, just near the Unisphere, again, people crammed everywhere. Uh, all of New York had decided they had to see the fair one last time. People gathering a few more flowers, taking them home. 
picking up everything in sight, just shredding the place. And still, this is not the last day yet. It gets even better. Outside the Vatican, one last chance to see the Pieta before it went back to, uh, to Rome. A lot of the uh, attractions, the lines were not as bad as you might have thought. One and a half hour waiting line for GE. I've seen it at two and a half and remember it being quite long. A lot of these times people were just going around and milling around, seeing the buildings and taking pictures. Besides taking flowers, they were seeing it one last time. Now we get to the last day, October 17th, 1965. It all ends. So we have some vintage uh, news uh, stories here, people coming in. Today's the last chance, and I, I think it's great. They said a huge crowd is expected for the finale. They had close to 400,000 people come through there that one day, which for those that work in the theme park business will know that is a tremendous crowd to get coming through at any point in time. And this is what happened. They, uh, they had laid off a lot of people during the fair to save money. Even if they had not, uh, even if they kept every custodian on staff, there's no way it could have kept up with the volume of people that went through. The trash cans and receptacles just couldn't get it all. Uh, there were so many people, it was just overwhelming. Part of the big problem was you couldn't get the trash trucks through the fair because the roads are absolutely clogged with people. So there were no service roads that really let you get to the into the fair to empty it out. You had to go through the main roads and the main roads were absolutely impassable. I always wish I could track this woman down and ask if she felt really, really proud of herself posing with her tiara and uh, lying there in the bed of flowers. Today, of course, World Fair collectors would go crazy for one last chance to get that bucket of chicken from uh, the uh, Chicken Delight stand. But it was just the pandemonium, just craziness. My parents were probably smart in not letting me go. People just packed in every place, going all over the place. The shops, of course, were having sales on everything. Uh, you know, if you had a World's Fair piece of merchandise, uh, today was the day to sell it because tomorrow your crowds were gone. So lots of bargains, lots of people uh, hunting for things. Some less performances at the New York State Pavilion. It's kind of interesting here, the round circular information desk is uh, empty because what is there to tell anybody that they don't know by this point in time? Look at the line of people waiting to get into the souvenir shop over by this, uh, underneath the staircase there. The whole long line of people is waiting to get in by the last pennants or uh, uh, other items featuring the New York State Pavilion, which today are very, very sought after. Looking out from the China Pavilion in the direction of New York State, Unisphere is just off to the right, people everywhere. And it gets even better. Again, more people, all the flowers that people didn't get yesterday, we're going to go and get these today and just rip them all out. We're going to take one last set of pictures of the uh, Mexican performers swinging from the ropes up there. And this is a view outside the Mexico Pavilion for one of the final performances of the Voladores, the uh, acrobatics group. Just look at that wall of people. Uh, and imagine the lines for the restrooms and everything else that day. No facility could be built to handle this sort of crowd. But at night, people are still going one last drink over at the uh, Louisiana Pavilion. It was still a chance to see the James Bond car over at the monorail station. This is not a great picture, but it's an interesting. It's probably the longest line I've ever seen for the lake cruise, that people are so anxious to do anything that if this was the only thing without a line, you might as well go see it. Time for one last drink at the Belgian, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, Lone Brow Pavilion. And we're getting down near the end of the, the fair. The, the lights are coming on, the sun's going down. That's really not too bad. Only a 20 minute wait for Bell System, 45 minutes for Futurama over at GM. Uh, again, a lot of the people are just going around seeing the grounds and soaking up the atmosphere or going to all the souvenir shops or stealing flowers. Finally, at the end of the night, as they're telling everybody to go home, there were 385,809 people that came through the, uh, uh, the turnstiles that day doesn't count others that came in as guests through the, the back doors or those that knew how to go under the holes of the fence. But 385,000 people, if they had had that number of people going every day, boy, this would have been a real moneymaker. So now the fair ends. The very next day, 
it comes down. They don't waste any time at all. And again, a parental warning here, tissues are advised past this point because now we get into the sad part of the program. They immediately come and start putting up fencing all, at all the gates to keep people out. Again, uh, vintage newspaper picture going in. Workman puts up fence at main gate looking towards the subway and Long Island Railroad. It's all being closed. The very next day uh, after the fair closed, Disney was wasting no time. Here's trucks loading the boats on for Small World onto trucks to go out to California. Somebody was commenting online yesterday, they had already seen all the crates that were stacked outside the Pepsi Pavilion labeled Disneyland, getting ready to take the, the dolls back out of there. You know, it's interesting to think they were in such a hurry. Wow, I mean, it just closed less than 12 hours before this picture was taken, those boats were in use and people were riding through Small World. But every day that they could get out of there was one day's less worth of rent they had to pay to the World's Fair Corporation. So there was a tremendous race to get on and the logistics that they had to start scheduling to get the demolition crews uh, safe access to the site were just about as daunting as they were to get the uh, uh, construction crews all in there. So yep, there's the Pepsi trucks uh, going out. And this is shots uh, Albert Fisher took walking around the fair. Uh, Albert took some of these, others were taken by the World's Fair Corporation. This is what it all looked like the, the next day after everybody had gone home. There's the bridge to Meadow Lake. We had just seen all those people on yesterday, absolutely packed today, hardly anybody in sight. Lots of debris. Poor statue, somebody got a souvenir, took her head home. This is interesting. There was a report in one of the security uh, reports for the World's Fair. They caught somebody trying to walk out the gate with a sign for the West Virginia Pavilion with a giant sign that said West V on it. He evidently couldn't get down the whole sign. But what on earth sort of souvenir would you really want to take a giant sign that said West V home with you, but somebody was encouraged to climb up on the roof, rip off part of the sign and try to take it home with them. This is about three days after the fair closed. This was the Alaska Pavilion uh, being demolished. They again, wasting no time. The faster you get out of there, the cheaper it was. So people were just going crazy, tearing it all down. It's still across the road. The General Motors sign is still lit up 44 one in the afternoon. People are tearing it all down. Somebody mentioned they really wanted to go to the World's Fair and stick a giant pin in one of the brass rail uh, inflated uh, balloons. Here's what they look like as the fans are turned off. And just stuff left everywhere. Just uh, sort of a Mad Max sort of environment. World's Fair Corporation photographer going around. Looks like he's taking some souvenirs under his arm. And again, just more junk, the tanks and everything. This is one of the balloon stains. What we're going to jump in now for a while is this sort of black and white contact sheets. For people that don't know what contact sheets are, uh, you take a 35 millimeter negative, lay it on a piece of film, expose it, and you end up with a very tiny little image of the, uh, the picture that you can then use to decide which ones you enlarge, which ones you blow up, whatever. I bought these at an auction in uh, New York years ago. Unfortunately, the fellow had lost the uh, uh, actual negatives. So these things are very small. They're a real pain in the butt to restore. So we're gonna see some both restored and not restored. But this is over by the train station, uh, Shea Stadium being over to the, the right here. And the guy was interesting because he got some views of uh, the, uh, some great views of the demolition, but also some interesting shots of things that don't normally show up in uh, pictures. So if you worked at the fair, this is where you would come get your ID card and uh, badge to go on in. Uh, you had the Pinkerton guards, allied maintenance, everything had this uh, service building that they could work in back here. The subway station was still there, of course, but it just across the uh, entryway was the fairground sitting there sort of silent and desolate. The beginning of demolition showing up and see cranes moving in. And we're gonna take a, a quick tour through there. This is about again, uh, oh, these are gonna be slightly out of order because as I took the contact sheets, I restored in whatever order they were in a pile. So we're gonna see things torn way back down and then seemingly back again. So we're gonna be a little bit of out of order, but we're gonna go take a, a tour into the, the grounds. What was interesting was uh, you can notice they had a gate there and a sign telling you don't come in, but there was nobody there telling you not to actually come in. 
So a lot of people just decide they would walk in, walk around, and eventually Pinkertons would catch them and chuck them out. Here's the Long Island Railroad platforms. We're walking over towards the main gates now. Here's the subway station, which again was absolutely packed just a couple of days early and now a ghost town. And just left some pictures in for old train car fans. This is the train yard you walk through to get into the uh, area. All the new subway trains they put into place for the uh, fair and some older ones we're using for work cars. But we're in the fairgrounds now. And this is again the first week the fair closed. You can see the edge of the RCA pavilion just over to the right behind that one of the brass rails sad and deflated. And pretty much just emptiness in every direction. RCA. Oh, again, some of these are slightly out of order. They've already taken down the ticket booths and turnstiles. Uh, you can see the markings on the ground where the turnstiles used to be. Again, looking down towards Gotham Plaza. Whoops, come on, sign come back. Come on, there we go. So they're warning you don't come on in. We're gonna see this sign again uh, later on with some uh, extra embellishment by New Yorkers. So keep in mind how nice and clean this looks now. We'll see it again in a little while. But now we're gonna hop in. As I mentioned, these are slightly out of order at different times. We're gonna see uh, emptiness and then things will come back. One of the things they left all around the fairgrounds as much as they could was signage because otherwise after a while, the piles of debris all started looking like each other. And if you had to contract the hallway to the Formica house, but there was no sign to tell you where the Formica house had been, you would not know it. So it's kind of interesting to look through all these pictures of the affair and see signs out for things that no longer existed. The Pavilion of American Interiors, again, being reduced to uh, uh, rubble. Uh, one of the things that would happen is you can see an escalator system sitting off to the left. Some pieces were sold off for scrap, uh, just the sheer metal value. Others were sold as working uh, fixtures. So this escalator system taken out, probably stuck in somebody's department store. This was the uh, uh, Better Living Center. It had been talked about keeping it for a while. They thought it would make an excellent record retention uh, center for the city of New York. It had been built to very high levels of uh, concrete and steel uh, flooring that could hold a, a lot of load of paper. But Robert Moses absolutely insisted it come down, and had a huge fit when the city uh, proposed keeping it up. Uh, by the way, that's the uh, fountain of the planets out there in the center where the fireworks had been, the water levels sort of down. They had drained it down so that they could demolish the, the fountain mechanisms. This dirt area off to the left was once the bell system. Again, looking back over just in the general area. Here's the little building that stands out in the middle of the lake that we talked about uh, last week. It'd be nice to get a rowboat and go out there and visit it. Pavilion American Interiors. What happened with some of these is that the uh, some pavilions came down right away. The day after Disney was there to take their stuff home, Ford was there to take others. Others ran into real financial uh, issues. They had been required to put up demolition bonds with the fair corporation guaranteeing that they would demolish the pavilions. But in some cases, they just didn't actually have the money to do it all or the fair corporation had been so desperate to have them actually build their pavilions that they did not enforce the bond issue. And as a result, some of these people packed up and uh, decided that they were not gonna tear it down. And the fair corporation had to take them to court, get things going to take it all down. Post office uh, pavilion, still there today as a maintenance facility. We'll see this again. And we'll hop through some of these semi quickly because there's multiple views of the same things. Took down all the luminaires, put them up on saw horses. They had left the poles in the park to put the modern street lights on, but these were all being taken down to be sold at the auction. Wouldn't it be nice to own a pickup truck right back about this period of time? Again, we're standing at what used to be the bell system, looking out towards the Unisphere. And again, more signage showing you what the piles of crap used to be. 
over to the left, you can see, uh, we can, there's the logo for it. There's the RC pavilion and the building coming down over there. Some of the things, again, are pretty well intact. The Arlington uh, hat shop behind it with the story of felt sign still on it. But this was a major broadcast facility, and now it's just scrap metal. Some pavilions were carefully taken apart. The Mormon uh, church pavilion here was one such pavilion. These panels that you see uh, just uh, over towards the left-hand side were not being scrapped. They were being taken off by hand and moved out to a church, Mormon church on Long Island, still out there today. So uh, some of it, they just came in with bulldozers. Others, they came in and surgically took it apart. Some things like the Festival of Glass did attract, it seemed, every sort of vandal that you could imagine. All the plate glass in the restaurant gets smashed out and, and looking just in terrible shape. They've ripped off the fiberglass uh, panels across the roof so they can get ready to start taking the uh, structural steel down. Kind of blurry because the guy was in a moving car, the NCR pavilion. Again, Festival of Gas. Johnson Wax, Austria behind it. Uh, Austria, they were taken down to move upstate to become a, a, a ski lodge. One of the easier ones to take down, the Pennsylvania exhibit, uh, it was really easy to take down, take your replica of the Liberty Bell back home. Bell system looking intact and ready to open for business the next day. We'll see that changes. Johnson Wax. GE's ripping everything out. Again, Disney had moved crews in, ASAP to get the audio animatronic figures out to start taking them back to uh, Disneyland, but they needed to have the whole building taken down so they could get the transport system, the uh, rotating theater out, so they were wasting no time getting that underway. I can only imagine how melancholy it was to go walking around the fairgrounds at this point in time, seeing all this come down. We would watch it from the highways as we drove by, and you just, you know, it was like nibbling, rats nibbling away at a block of cheese. Every time you went by, there was a little bit less. This was the waiting area for GE, where all those people had been lined up waiting on their queues to go in. Another one is sad for the Disney fans. This was Small World, the uh, UNICEF pavilion over to the uh, right there. And you can see the Tower of the Four Winds had stood there. Again, some of these pictures are out of order, so we'll come back and see it when it was still there. But at this point, the tower has been uh, taken down and either thrown into the river, as some people say, or cut up and sold for scrap metal, as others say. But this, again, was small world. The boats are gone, the dolls are gone, and the building is sadly coming down. All the metal just sold off for scrap metal because it was, uh, again, a prefab warehouse-type building. Disney and Pepsi had no use for it whatsoever, so it was just sold to salvers. The Kodak moon roof is coming down. Another view of Small World. Hard to believe that, you know, again, six months earlier, it was on the happiest voyage ever, and now it's all just being shredded. Kodak coming down. Kodak was one of the first pavilions to be finished and one of the first ones to be completely uh, removed from the grounds. So it's, it's coming down pretty quick at this point in time. Another token view of Small World. The J Copter exhibit, you can see the log flume up on the back and taking that out, moving it over to a uh, theme park down in Florida. Just debris and stuff in every direction. Monorails are still hanging on the track, waiting to be sold to a fellow in Texas that unfortunately was never able to put them back into use. As I mentioned, they left the signage up to the last possible minute. So parts of Hawaii coming down. Back over the lake amusement area, looks like the pretzel stand was still there, but pretty much everything else gone. Walter's uh, Wax Museum. Again, a lot of these buildings had no real intrinsic value, so they were just sold off for the metal uh, worth of it. 
And again, some views just going through the park. And as I mentioned, it's slightly out of order, so RCA has popped back into a semblance of itself. Tower of the Four Winds is still there in this particular shot. It was there one day and gone the next. So uh, didn't take much, I guess, to torch it off and do whatever they did with it. Kodak's interesting. You can see there's still remnants of some of the uh, giant pictures hanging off to there to the right. I asked somebody from Kodak if they had brought any of them back to save, and they said no. At this point in time, pigeons had done their work on them. The sun had sort of faded them, and they were so big, there was no place Kodak had in mind to exhibit them again. And if they ever needed them, they could recreate them. Unfortunately, as Kodak imploded, the, uh, all the records of where the pictures were and all that is now gone, and nobody knows where the negatives went. Coming in through, I believe this is the Rodman Gate. The uh, Russian Orthodox Church out there in the back. I think that was moved someplace else, but I've not been able to confirm it. Not much keeping you out from going in, is there? Especially if they left the gates open a lot of the time. This was one of the later pavilions to be taken down. It's the uh, Protestant and Orthodox Pavilion. Again, they ran into money taking it down, so it stayed there for the longest period of time. I have some pictures of the grounds, pretty well empty, and this is uh, standing there strangely by itself. Uh, Swiss Sky Ride, the sign left behind warning you that anybody dropping or throwing things is going to be ejected. But since this has been sold to uh, the uh, uh, theme park in New Jersey, and uh, they were able to get it out of there and take it real quick. The Philippines Pavilion mentioned so beautiful it's coming down. Korea is pretty much gone. And in some cases, it's hard to even figure out what was where and when. Billy Graham. And then again, I apologize for the lack of clarity. I've not restored all of these. Uh, contact sheets, they take forever. Uh, so I've just scanned a bunch of them and I have to sharpen them and clean them and do something with them as time permits. But it's so sad working the demolition pictures, I generally tend to push that off. And folks like Wayne, who's a big broadcast electronics fan, I'm sure would have loved to have taken a piece of the RCA pavilion home. Turned out the fellows, the architect took a bunch of the copper discs that they had decorated the pavilion and had them in his garage and sold them off on uh, eBay a couple of years ago. So pieces of things do show up. I feel like we should be playing funeral mu music or you know, some uh, you know, dirge sort of a song for background for these. I see somebody asked if they took the uh, rotating mechanism for uh, the uh, GE back to Disneyland. Yes, they did. The only difference they made was they rotated in the opposite direction to more fit the for, uh, footprint of the building in California. But that was one of the things they needed to do was get the structure of the building out so they could take the rotating track out. This was the uh, uh, former thing where they had built the three uh, model homes uh, to be uh, showcased out there. Again, the, the big entrance plaza. Greyhound bus uh, stop, cheap, easy, assemble it back at your own house. Long Island Railroad platform just off to the right there. We're getting, this was the uh, big parking lot. They would put all the glider rides in and fill up uh, them for taking out on tours of the uh, uh, the grounds. Sort of a stark, sad view of what once had been happiness.
the Mason exhibit. And bulldozer is literally just tearing it to shreds. None of these uh, uh, phone booths uh, survived. They were all just torn to shreds and taken out. Starting to take the IBM pavilion down as far as the metal trees. The Singer Bowl being used just to store water trucks that were used to go throughout to try to keep the dust and dirt down on the site. Montana, again, some of these things were sold off. People someplace probably have a nice log cabin. Uh, a lot of it was just put, torn apart and taken out. We'll get back into the wonderful world of color in just a moment. And there we are. Again, these are some large uh, image slides taken of uh, the, the fair being torn down. You have to, in various cases, try to figure out exactly what hunks of metal we're looking at. In this particular case, uh, dead center is the tower is coming down for the aerial tower ride. You have the log flume ride is still up there behind it, and the monorail is waiting to be relocated. This was kind of interesting. Belgian Village, it looks a lot like a scene out of the old TV show Combat. I mean, it's just being absolutely ripped to shreds. <clears throat> I mentioned before, they, the day after the fair ended, they came into the tower, uh, into the Belgian Village and went to the uh, clock tower and found out the night the fair closed, somebody cut the cables, dropped all the bells from the bell tower to the ground, put them in a truck and spirited it away. There was a lot of stuff getting stolen off the fairgrounds. Uh, particularly, as you can see, they left gates open. Uh, pe people came in and took things uh, home, like phone booths, all sorts of things. They, Belgian Village, although a lot of this was wood uh, frame structures, some of the major ones like the church and the bell tower were done with steel frames and they actually put uh, mechanisms in there and shook them intentionally to pieces to simulate an 8.0 earthquake to see what in impact uh, steel structures can do in surviving those and how do you put the cross beams and other things in to uh, minimize that. Vatican Pavilion was a combination of take it, some of it down carefully and move it over to Groton, Connecticut, make a church and other pieces of it just ripped down and shredded. I got a kick out of this one. This is the General Motors Pavilion over our head here and looking uh, across the grounds. And it's only an estimated waiting time of one and a half hours. So funny the things that you know just st stay there in the site forever, I think it'd be a little bit longer wait if you try to get on and see it again at this point. There's the uh, Japan Pavilion off in the background, all the stones in that taken down moved to a college for eventual uh, resurrection. The college never got the money and ended up getting buried in a pile of dirt in their, their grounds. Again, General Motors coming down. You can see we're in the middle of winter here with the snow all around. The US Space Park, a lot of the exhibits were being taken out, uh, but the uh, rockets were being left in place. Way in the background, you can see some of the steel work coming down for various things. All of science off to the right. This one, somebody was asking, why on earth is there a season's greeting sign on it? Well, that's the sign for the Hollywood Pavilion. And the contractor who was tearing that to pieces decided he would put up a sign, wish you season greetings, and also just happened to put the name of his sign, Kaiser Nelson, up there in case you might have a World's Fair you needed torn down as well. So season greetings were right, roughly December. 65 right now, so only three months after the fair has uh, closed. Back to the Lake Amusement Area, the Texas Pavilion, which was known as Carnival, and that uh, the 65 season is coming down. Tower Lights, somebody was mentioning how this is not being torn to pieces, it's being dismantled. This was all clad in aluminum panels, and the aluminum had value. So this is one of the pavilions you would take it apart and sell them the pavilion off for the scrap value as opposed to just shredding it and taking it to a landfill. 
Joey Vento mentioned that transform or vault F, that gray building uh, off to the, uh, the right-hand side is still in the park today. Uh, built, of course, uh, to add in all the electrical connections that something like the Tower of Light needed back then. Ah, another Disney pavilion coming down, the Ford Magic Skyway. The cars, of course, are all gone. Uh, used to be that you had the latest Ford Mustang or whatever in the center, and just by coincidence, now we see a uh, bulldozer in the same area. So Disney, at this point, has taken the um, caveman figures and that back out to uh, California, the dinosaurs and that. Uh, they did not take the ride mechanism out because they did not have any particular plans to move a fleet of automobiles around. So all of those rotating wheels and everything are still in the skyway and they were just sold off as motors for shop work, uh, you know, in an auction catalog. Bell system being shredded, the plastic, the plastic outside taken off so they can get into the metal and take it all down. They've already taken down the microwave tower that we saw go up a week or so ago because there was no more need for communications out of the facility. Kind of interesting, Rheingold, you can see it was not real bricks, it was just a brick veneer because they've ripped off the ground level and those bricks are magically hanging in the air because they're actually just plastic. West Virginia coming down. This is an interesting one. If anybody knows what these metal objects are, please do let me know. We cannot figure them out. You can see at this point, the GE Pavilion uh, in the background is, is coming well along in its destruction. Uh, it had been put up by Bethlehem Steel and they had put, made sure their signage was on it when you saw the pavilion come up and now it's coming down more for the advertising. But we have been unable to figure out what these metal uh, figures are for, what pavilion they came from. So if anybody has any ideas, please uh, do let me know. We are now standing on top of the Underground World home. Again, tremendous uh, conjecture, uh, people having a lot of guesses, conjecture what happened to it. Uh, some of that were there told me that they tore off the roof filled it in with all the debris from other pavilions so that people didn't have to pay truckers to take it away. That round dome thing off to the center or the left rather is the uh, ventilation shaft for it. So somewhere underneath all this crap is the underground world home. Big uh, uh, battering ram or a uh, uh, wrecking ball hanging there taking down parts of the Florida pavilion. Palm trees, I don't think survived. I don't think they went to anybody in New York. You can see Meadow Lake frozen over in the background and the boathouse uh, off behind it. And uh, time is up for the, uh, uh, the Seven Up Pavilion. This was one of the uh, counters inside. You can see all the uh, uh, openings in it where you would take your food and everything. Uh, the whole pavilion is being torn down. And, it's really sad to think things like this clock. You can see it was just blowtorched off, let fall to the ground, you know, cracking a million pieces. You know, today I'm sure somebody would love to have this giant seven up clock sitting someplace, maybe a seven up headquarters, but back then it all came down. Other bu buildings coming down everywhere you look. This one's not restored yet. Uh, you can see it's got a kind of a red tint to it, but again, uh, the Lake Cruise building is lined upside down with the roof for it, the little uh, structures that they had for selling tickets that we saw everybody getting their last minute ride uh, the night the fair closed. New Jersey Pavilion is starting to come down. Unisphere is still standing proudly behind it. Tower there marking where Hawaii had been. More people just driving their bulldozers smack dab through the RCA pavilion. Again, sorry thing of the festival of gas. And traveler's insurance, the triumph of man, sort of ironic, the sign still up and the pavilion coming down. So we're gonna hop up now, we get into 1966. The plan had been, of course, everybody had six months to get their pavilions taken down. And as I mentioned, some people had the money to take them down, others did not. So this young boy and his dad went out to visit the fairgrounds one last time, and there were still some of the pavilions still coming down. 
Um, this, I believe, was Hawaii. Some parts of it have been raised. That's the site of the Bell System Pavilion. Others, again, we saw before Pavilion American Interior is still coming down. Interesting, one of the Swiss clocks are still standing there on site. I've never been able to find out where any of them ended up. Odd though that they left them there so much to the end. And just giant pieces of concrete marking where things used to be. And it's starting to start looking more like a park and less like a World's Fair. Again, they had intended to keep this as a record center, the uh, Federal Living Center and Robert Moses War Out. Here's the same sign we saw before. Uh, people had to come and autograph it. I love down at the bottom, the very last thing it says, we missed the fair, reopen. And boy, is that a sentiment, how many of us uh, uh, shared it. And then uh, uh, like next to it, a sign of the times, you would have a boss time there. Uh, the bistro at the fair, you would have a boss time there. I haven't heard anybody use the expression boss, you know, as a uh, adjective in a long time. So we're looking over at the transportation area now. You can see the travel and transportation pavilion left off to the left. Uh, Greyhound pavilion right over to the right, just a little bit of a sweeping arch. They had intended to use the Greyhound pavilion for a fire station. It stayed up for a long period of time. They finally decided that the cost of retrofitting it would be prohibitive and it came uh, down. Uh, the transportation pavilion, they basically said, we're done, we're out of money, walked away and left it there. So it sat there for a long period of time. This is one of my favorite post-fair pictures of the, the fair. Uh, somebody asked if this was me, and I said, no, I was uh, 15 uh, uh, by this point in time, but, uh, just imagine standing outside looking at what had been, uh, you can see all the, the poles there for the luminaries have been decapitated, the lights are gone, uh, benches are still in place in some spots, trash cans or some of them are there. But uh, you know, some of the pavilions so tantingly look uh, ready to go and others are just gone. Phone booths have been ripped out of this particular area. This is the Century Grill coming down, uh, snack bar type area. It's funny, my friend Bill Young, who I co-written my books on the 64 World's Fair, posted a thing on uh, one day about how this was a famous build building done by a world famous architect and being taken carefully apart to preserve it. And it turned out people didn't realize he had published it on April 1st. So it was a, a great story he had done. But yeah, world-class architect indeed. New York State still standing there as it is today, of course, but everything around it's sort of gone. Finally, they got a court order to let them start tearing the travel and transportation pavilion down and they start ripping it to shreds. Again, escalator system sitting there off to the right, waiting to be carted away by the new buyer. Better living center. Standing smack dab where the bell system was. You can still see all the tractor tread marks by the uh, tra uh, caterpillar tra bulldozers that tore the thing apart. Mentioned earlier the uh, Greek and Protestant pavilion, one of the later ones standing there, you can see it blocking part of the view is the uh, US pavilion. If you go out to the park today, these fences are still there, the, the railings around the, uh, the lake. Again, wouldn't you like to have a pickup truck, huh? I mean, just look at all these just stacked up there, ready to go. These were in a parking lot just off to the fair site for years. It took them forever to sell them all off. A bunch of them went to Oklahoma, some went to Massachusetts, some went up to Orange County Fairgrounds in New York. But there were a lot of them that were there for years. And I tried to convince my father desperately to buy one and put it in our backyard. And I think I remember my father trying to have me committed at the time. But boy, if I had been able to get one of these, it would have been just great. I can remember telling him, yeah, they have speakers in them. We can play the music in the backyard. And he would just shake his head sorrowfully and just continue driving. And I, I think after a while, he stopped trying to drive on that section of road until one day we noticed they were all gone and it was safe to go again. 
Now we're into 67. The fair is, uh, is over. The park uh, demolition is pretty much done. And they're reopening it as a city park. So we're in this, uh, the Singer Bowl. Uh, this is the reopening day festivities. Uh, didn't have quite the crowd that they had been hoping for to come to some of these. But different groups have come out and proclaim the grand reopening of the park again. So different marching bands, lots of uh, twirlers and uh, other things. You can see stands set up for speakers in the back. They even had balloons to celebrate the opening of the park. And outside you had marching bands, lots of fife and drum corps, other things going on. The fountains around the Unisphere are back on. It's looking all very festive. New York State Pavilion had been refurbished. They put in extra staircases that they needed to meet the building codes for a permanent building. Uh, had been uh, repainted. The red and white fabric panels that were there during the fair are gone. It's now done in kind of a cream color. The exhibits are gone from the uh, uh, mezzanine. I don't believe they were operating the elevators up to the observation platform, but they were doing a judo demonstration at this point in time. The column of Jarash, a gift from Jordan, was still there, still there is today in the, uh, the park. And as soon as the place opened, people, of course, jumped into the fountains, which is why we can't have nice things anymore because people will go get hurt in them and they have to take the water out, et cetera. But this is opening day back in 67 when the, the public was allowed to come back in to the grounds again. And just the US Pavilion standing silent and empty. We'll see some more of that in a moment. We're up at the top of the fair restaurant. It was uh, again open as a catering hall looking over to the fair grounds. Uh, tent down below was for the VIPs that had come out for the grand reopening celebration. The signs on the New York City Pavilion are proclaiming how the panorama is there and was still operating and uh, people could go in and uh, take a look at it. Looking across at the U.S. Pavilion, silent and empty and nobody had any idea what they were going to do with it at this point in time. New York uh, State, if you look very closely going through the New York State Pavilion, you'll see a little white thing off, uh, sort of to the left or the right of center, rather. That is the Astral Fountain. Uh, they have taken off the metal framework, but the fountain is running. This is the only day I've ever found pictures of that fountain actually running again uh, after the uh, fair closed. You can see nobody's up at the top of the observation towers. They're not running them up there. They had buses running around uh, all th throughout the fairgrounds. You could take one of these buses from the transportation area, uh, it ride over and take a, a visit to where the uh, rest of the fair had been. The brown dirt area was where the transportation travel pavilion had been. They had barely gotten it torn down in time to open the park and had not time had not had time to sod it or clean it up at that point. And this is what a lot of the fairgrounds still look like, still piles of dirt and stuff to be taken away. Eventually turned into a zoo and other odds and ends. The luminaires are gone and the official New York City uh, street lights are up. Fountains are still working over at the uh, uh, New York City Pavilion. The uh, armillary sphere was still there, had yet to be stolen by vandals. But again, just this is where, where uh, Chrysler had been, where the zoo is now. So the, again, the park is officially open at this point in time, which you can still see there's still a lot of work still left to be done. Forms in motion still there. Uh, the uh, parts of the rocket park are still there. Now we're going to jump up ahead a few years. Uh, the, the fair has been gone. The park has been open. The U.S. Pavilion has been sitting there. And in July 4th, 1971, uh, we're taking a visit out because there's going to be a big announcement made that they're going to finally do something with the uh, U.S. Pavilion. Kind of a neat little snack bar on site. Uh, map of the fairgrounds or the uh, park uh, where, uh, uh, as it looked in 1971. Some old signage, the garden mediation is still there. 
But here's the uh, U.S. Pavilion still sitting there. You can see it's a little worse for the wear. Uh, some people have take, broken out some of the plastic panels. But for the most part, it's, it's not looking too bad. Uh, it's been sitting there derelict. Uh, two weeks from now, Charles Abar, who worked at the fair uh, site after, is going to talk about what it was like to work at the New York State Pavilion as the uh, uh, roller rink. And he's also going to talk about his adventures in the abandoned U.S. Pavilion. The uh, Singer Bowl has yet to be torn down, turned into the tennis arena. It was intended to be used for uh, local performances and that, but never really got put to much use. Just sitting there kind of empty. And now over at the U.S. Pavilion, somebody has pried off the giant uh, eagle. The, I think it was made of bronze. It's probably in somebody's basement somewhere in Queens, but a bunch of dignitaries are going to come out. If people do know and can put names to some of these faces later on, please let me know, because I don't know, who, I think I know who some of them are, I don't know who all of them are. But they were making an announcement now how the pavilion was going to be rebuilt and uh, reused and it was going to be great. Of course, it never came to, to be. We'll be back there in just a second. Fountains have been turned off, their liability issues. The elevators parked partially up the uh, tower by Charles and he'll be talking about that. Still in the park today. The motorized mechanism to make it rotate wore out years ago. Still there today. Of course, people had to put graffiti on it. So here, again, they're having a big ceremony and talking about something that they were gonna do with the pavilion. I have to try to drag up more of the details of the plans, but it's, it's looking in pretty good shape at this point in time. And people are very hopeful that they're gonna find a, uh, a use for it. Behind the dignitaries, the sad state of what it actually looked like. Back over to the Unisphere, no fountains, so let's go climb up in the base of the, uh, the, the Unisphere. And 70s were not the best time in New York, so of course we have to graffiti everything in sight. I went back to the fairgrounds in uh, this period of time and could not believe the sorry state of some of the areas. Uh, New York was going through a garbage strike and they were just dumping garbage from Queens all over the fairgrounds as some place to put it until the uh, strike was over. It was really sad. Lithuanian Wayside Cross had yet to be torn apart and shredded by vandals, so it was still there looking good. Garden of Mediation, uh, or Meditation rather, uh, their sign is uh, not looking so good, but the, the plaque is still there from Francis Bacon from the fair. Fountain nozzles are still all in place, but the fountains have, have been long silent. The statue was added post fair by the Masons. Uh, they had this is a statue inside. They recast it in metal to put it out in the park. And now we're going to jump to 1977, and uh, now we really, really, really do need our tissues because finally they decided the U.S. Pavilion had to come down. There had been all sorts of talk about turning it into a community college. There was all sorts of talk about turning it into a community center. Uh, this is Joey Vento taking parts of it home. Um, there was also talk about turning it into a, a home for unwed mothers, at which point the building mysteriously burned, was uh, pretty much unuseful and, and torn down. So we're just looking at it, it coming down. You can see how much steel was inside this building, uh, again, held up by these four pillars at the end. The center staircase and planters dead in the center there. But not really much left at this point in time. Just think of all that scrap metal. Boilers lying there in the center, it had its own very large air conditioning and heating plant, uh, which had been uh, left there when the fair ended. One fellow had been paid by the federal government to live there for a number of years. He had a fully uh, furnished apartment, microwave and kitchen and TV and everything. Uh, they got into a big argument with the city of New York when the city realized that nobody had been paying rent on the uh, area or the utilities for the, the pavilion. So yet another court battle ensued. So it's all coming down. Parts of the air conditioning system. 
And as bad as it looks here, it gets worse. They keep tearing it down. More and more of it goes away over time. The steelwork is almost gone, disappearing. One of those uh, pillars held in the elevator system. It's gone by this point in time. Finally, we come back about two weeks later, and all the steel is gone, and it's just a giant pile again. This was, I, I always got a kick out of this. Those trees had not been watered since 1965, but they did a pretty good job. This is 1977, and they're still standing in those planters that they had been put for the uh, fair. So this was the central staircase area that everybody walked up. It had all the support facilities, offices, and everything else uh, underneath it being exposed now for the first time. And it's just all being shredded and, and hauled away. And that, my friends, is the sad end of the 64 World's Fair. Pretty, pretty sad to see it all come down, isn't it? So questions, comments, uh, free tissues? If anybody, uh, OK, uh, Steve, people can either use the uh, raise hand button or wave frantically, and I will look for you. So Steve, you should be able to unmute yourself. OK, so I did unmute myself. That picture you had of the GM, of the GE pavilion with those cones in front of it, that you weren't sure what they were, that that's the site of the Tower of Light. And I believe I've seen a picture of the 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 searchlight that shut the beam up above the pavilion, and those were the covers for for the for the uh, the, the the beam of light. That was um, my first thought too, Steve. Was the was yeah. the, the location was right, and I posted that on Facebook and say, hey, look, here is the the uh, thing for it. And somebody immediately corrected me, as will always happen on Facebook, and posted a picture of what the actual uh, light fixtures look like, which I do have someplace. They don't match. Now, it's possible that they were something further up the tower that focused them or did mm -hmm. something else, but they don't match the picture of the light fixtures at the base of the, uh, the lighting facility. So I, I do I, think they probably had something to do with the tower of light, but they were not yeah. the light fixtures themselves. I've seen a picture and I'm, I, I'm going to locate it and find it. And when I do, I'll let you know. That'd be great. Appreciate it. And the other thing I wanted to mention is um, the uh, luminaires. Um, the, when I was married about 10 years in 1990, my friends of ours were taking us to uh, Pennsylvania for the weekend. And we were driving down the road and we passed Penn Hills, the Penn Hills Resort. Yes, right. And as we put, passed, pulled up to the resort, all of a sudden, I see luminaires everywhere. I had no idea that they were there. And I made my friend pull over and stop. And I wish I had a camera. And I wish I had could have gotten one in the back seat of my car. But I mean, I couldn't believe all the luminaires that were there. And I believe they're, if the Penn Hills is still there, that they're still there as well. But Yeah, you know, I think most of the ones in Penn Hills are gone. The resort went bankrupt. And the... Uh, sold them off. And they were trying to get some insanely high price for it. Matter of fact, I remember seeing the price for it and it said something to my dad, you know, hey dad, look, if we had bought a couple of those lights, you know, uh, we, we'd be in the money now. And he didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they they showed up, a whole bunch of them showed up at the uh, Oklahoma State Fairgrounds. They bought a huge mm -hmm. amount. And a number of years ago, they put theirs up for sale. And I thought seriously about trying to get one, but they're so big. I mean, my dad was yeah. smart. I, I like to joke about how I wanted one. He was the smart one. They would have dwarfed our backyard. But uh, they've shown up in a, a couple of places, and a couple of people on the call have some of them in their, their backyard. But they are uh, absolutely used. But boy, I sure mm -hmm. went so bad in 65. I do have one cube, you know, in my collection. Right. Yeah. And, and imagine if that was a 10 or 12 cube luminaire, how big it'd be. It would be huge. Yeah, the, the one is pretty big. Great. Dave English, you have your hand up. I wanted to know if anybody has a picture of the actual 
fixture or mechanism that was used for the tower of light? More information yeah. about the light itself. I have one someplace. I've got a whole article on my site about lighting at the fair, and I think that's in there. If not, remind me, Dave. Uh, I'll go off and find a, it, uh, a picture of it. It was a, uh, a room smack dab in the center of it that you could look at during the day that they would intelligently cover over at night so it didn't blind anybody that went in. But they made a big ceremony every day you would get uh, nominated as, you know, they, they'd make over the last speakers tonight, Dave English from California, and you'd push the button, the light would come on. Uh, but I, I do have a picture of it. If you don't find it on the site, let me know and I will track it down for you. So was it, was it an arc light? I mean, even today, not so often, but once in a while, there'll be a premiere and they rent these big arc lights that they fire up and you know you see this beam shooting up into the sky in LA. Wayne is waving, maybe Wayne has an answer. It was actually about 12 different light fixtures uh, in there. It wasn't one central beam, like an arc light that went up. It was about 12 different uh, uh, you know, lighting fixtures that melded together to come up the beam. Wayne, you had some information? Uh, yeah, they were they, uh, Zena and uh, Art sort of uh, lamp. I'd have to look it up, but uh, not the carbon arc lamp, which gets used up uh, quickly. So it was something much more long lasting, like uh, the little arc lamp that's used in a uh, LCD projector today. Well, if you if you have some picture photos of that, Bill, maybe you could uh, send me the link so I could yeah. try to find it. Just interested, you know, seeing the evolution of uh, of light, certainly in the motion picture industry, um, and knowing how hard it is to continue to keep a lamp. Uh, I mean, the the larger ones that are used in IMAX are water cooled. And uh, they don't last forever, and they're expensive. So, be interesting to see what they did. Yeah, it doesn't look water cooled. Uh, I'll see if I can find the picture for it. Uh, as I said on my site, I do a whole thing. Uh, they did an entire article about lighting at the fair for all the different pavilions and the lighting systems, the underwater uh, lamps that they used in the, uh, the the water shows, that sort of thing. So, it's a uh, kind. Of, it's uh, all the trade magazines I have somewhere about escalators and elevators at the fair. They put out a mag. I mean, again, fascinating article because it has uh, some great pictures of the uh, ride system from the uh, U.S. Pavilion. The moving uh, uh, grandstand that went through it was, you know, done as a ride system. And you know, the federal government, when I asked them for pictures, they said, "Oh, we don't know where they went." If you look in Elevator World magazine, there they are. So. It's, it's really kind of great to go through the, uh, the trade journals of the time. I'm a little surprised that they took out the track mechanism from GE to take it all the way across the country to reinstall it at Disneyland. Um, did they take the rails, actually the track? It's, oh my gosh. Yeah, they, took, wow. they basically took everything in there uh, other than the, like, the fusion generator, all that stuff that was you know, the third floor shows but they took everything out there and moved it out because it was all bought and paid for by GE and that was part of the pitch uh, Disney made to GE was we can salvage all this for you and you don't have to rebuild it it's all built you just put it on a truck and take it all out Disney in turn liked it because they knew exactly then the specifications one guy I talked to uh, back at the time said one of the reasons was they would keep anybody from improving it at Disneyland and driving up the cost so by forcing them to use the exact same uh, physical mechanism that came out of New York, you had to use the old system. You couldn't improve it. Well, I do remember in, in my early days in 1967 at MAPO, uh, but probably would have been 60, maybe 68 when it was going on. But the um, I actually rewired that mechanism that they had for the, the girl that was uh, trying to reduce the size of her hips or something like that. You know, there was this uh, vibration thing right. and it came into the shop 
And I ended up putting up a new, putting a new power cord on it or something like that. So indeed, all of those props came in, were refurbished, and then reused at Disneyland. Yeah, and like I said, that the only difference they made was they rotated it in the uh, different direction. Right. right. Yeah. So theater one became theater six. You know that sort of thing. So it it worked out. Anyone else thoughts of the fair demolition? By the way, people ask. Uh, Get to one second helmet. People ask uh, about you know what happened to some of these uh, pieces and stuff. Uh, Shameless plug. My second book on the World's Fair has a, a whole chapter of where things went. So uh, where pieces went for this pavilion, where people went for that pavilion. Uh, uh, the, of course, as soon as we finished the book, more pieces showed up. You know that that sort of thing became known. But we try to go into where the luminaires went, where the log bloom ride went, pieces of churches, all that particular thing. So if you go to, uh, where did I put it? Oh, I, I have a genuine souvenir here. Does it show? Yes, it does. If anybody's buying anything on my website this week and you'd like a genuine Schaefer uh, Center uh, um, coaster, I will be glad to throw it in. Or I didn't know where I put them. If you'd prefer a genuine child's ticket to the World's Fair, I will throw that in. So <laughs> I, I am desperately trying to clean up the house and I'd like to get some of the books or other nonsense out of here. So if anybody wants a uh, uh, souvenir, please, any, any purchase from the site this week. I feel like a huckster, but I, I want to get some of this crap out of here. So poor Carol knows I am in a massive house cleaning project. Like right now, it's only 15 to 20 years behind schedule. So Helmet, you had your hand up? Yeah, I, I went to the, um, the, um, the, the park recently uh, to check up on what was left of the foundations of, of the monorail. And they were just like huge tar humps along the highways. So uh, recently, I guess they just kind of smoothed them over. So you know, the, tum the, the humps aren't there anymore. So it's just a smooth track of, you know, gray walkway. But there's still some small swells um, in the walkway near the, near the Long Island Expressway and back along the concession stand, but they're barely noticeable. Also, uh, there's a, they have scaffoldings up around the observation towers as well. So maybe, you know, when they smoothed out the uh, the tarred humps, you know, it was maybe it was part of the res renovation. Yeah, I think they took them out for liability issues that they were becoming so prominent that you know it made it hard for people to get around, particularly with any sort of crowd or anything. And you can't see if you're walking along, and all of a sudden this hump is sitting in front of you, or if you were in a wheelchair or a mobility chair or anything, post. It'd be a real thrill ride going over. But yeah, you used to be able to spot exactly where the monorail pylons had been. And we talked about that about a week ago. That's not because the pylons came up. It's because the rest of the park went down. Yeah, because it was built on swampland. Yeah. And Thomas asked, what happened to the banners from the Vatican Pavilion? I believe they were given off to local churches, Tom. I, I remember hearing that some of them were on display, um, but I don't remember where they've gone since then. Um, but I, I believe that the church that was part of, if I recall the story correctly, the Diocese of New York had asked various churches to contribute to the funding of the pavilion and in reward for, uh, you know, uh, doing that when the pavilion came down, they were given pieces of it to display back at their, uh, their particular churches. And basically the, uh, it was done proportion. If you had given a lot of money, you got a lot more of the, uh, uh, displays or the first uh, first picks, and I recall I had gone to some church and there was a discussion about I'm trying to remember about 10 15 years ago about somebody had one of them in their church and we're trying to figure out how to clean them without damaging and I, I don't know if I saved that article but I know they did survive and were in display at least in one church that you know we didn't realize what we had until we started looking into cleaning them and realized what a treasure we had because over 20, 30, 40 years, nobody remembers where you got anything anyway. Anyone else? Who, who decided that the New York State Pavilion should remain and, and the Heliport building should remain and, and who owns those buildings? 
Well, it's interesting. There's a, a, uh, a chart that the, I, I don't know if I put it on the side or I have it or not. World's Fair Corporation, uh, early 65, commissioned a study in what should stay in the park. Originally, they decided nothing was going to stay in the park, basically, uh, because of uh, they wanted to turn into a park land. So Robert Moses wanted basically everything torn out. Well, it had been decided early on that the uh, heliport would stay there. The way that they had to build it to make it strong enough for a heliport was going to make it very expensive to tear down. And they saw it as a facility, just like Cavern on the Park, or Cavern on the Green in Central Park. This could become a you know a restaurant facility for uh, uh, flushing. So that was uh, intended to stay. Almost everything else was intended to come down, including the New York State Pavilion. Robert Moses absolutely wanted to tear it down, didn't want it there, hated it. Uh, he wanted everything torn down, uh, basically. And they got into a thing where others in New York thought, hey, maybe there's some value of it. And the governor of New York was really smart. He basically said, oh, I'm going to give you this multi-million dollar pavilion, which made it cheap that the, um, the city got it for nothing. And the, uh, the New York state government didn't have to tear it down. So it worked out well for the state. Not so well for the city because now they had this uh, albatross. What do they do with it? And it never been designed for long term use. And that's what they decided to go into the, uh, 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 you know, the roller rink business and you know some concerts held in the Grateful Dead and others to make some use for it. Then they had looked into other pavilions like the uh, 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 you mentioned the Greyhound Pavilion had been slated to uh, keep it as a New York City fire station. Uh, there were a couple others that were sort of surprising. They, they had talked for a long time about keeping the basement of the Bell System Pavilion and the basement of the GM Pavilion uh, because they had been built so well to hold up those massive structures, but they couldn't figure out what to do with them. So GM came off the list first, but for quite a while they had looked into keeping the um, uh, basement of the, the Bell System and they finally gave up. They also did a study, which I have a copy of uh, for Ford, that they had decided to save the Wonder Rotunda, uh, not the whole giant show structure where all the dinosaurs were, but they were gonna save the Wonder Rotunda and connect it by a walkway over to the Hall of Science. And uh, did a big study on that. Uh, the, uh, the, that study still is at the Henry Ford Museum. I got a copy of that. But they had a whole thing on how it had been built at uh, specifications and how it would last. And, uh, they, they analyzed about escalators and emergency exits and all. So there was a big, big talk about taking off the Magic Skyway, keeping the rotunda, and using it for temporary exhibit space for the, uh, the museum. A uh, couple others had short time lives that they were, again, trying to think of what to do with. So today, uh, the uh, everything is pre pretty much owned by the city of New York. Uh, again, the, the same thing happened with the US Pavilion. Moses desperately wanted it torn down. The federal government said, hey, got a great gift for you. And then they walked away from it and left it there. And then uh, finally got torn down when it got so vandalized, it was past the, uh, the point of no return. Um, Trying to think of this, anything else that there were big battles over keeping. And again, some showed up on the list, and you'd be real surprised why would anybody have wanted to keep that, and then you know it would come back off the the list. But uh, it's all in the Fair Corporation minutes that I have copies of, and as I work on my side, I try to get some of those things added up there. I think Joey wanted to show us some of his uh, odds and ends. Hi, right, can you hear me okay, Bill? Yes, I can, Joey. Okay, uh, can you see me okay? Yes, I can. Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to the scrap metal uh, portion of our show. And uh, I'll just start very quickly with some of the pieces from uh, uh, New York State Pavilion. I, I've been collecting there since 1971 when my, my father would take me and he would sit on a bench and he'd say, just go, go crazy. Uh, and I'd explore all the buildings. And this is when no one went to the park, basically. So um, I'll just show you, if you can look back here, you can see some of the mold cast uh, lamps, uh, one with a glass still intact, and this one fell. Um, uh, traditionally, what I would do is I'd wait for a snowstorm or a high wind storm, and then go to the park and see what fell off the New York State Pavilion. 
And um, we, uh, my wife has decorated this. These used to hang in our garden. I don't know if you can see these okay. Um, this, uh, I had a workman in the 80s when they were doing the renovations on the decks. Uh, a workman went up to one of the decks and brought me down one of the, uh, the uh, cobalt uh, lamps. So we use it as a decoration under our table. Um, these are just other pieces from New York State Pavilion. Uh, this hangs on our uh, doorway, uh, baffle plate uh, for, I guess, electrical switches. Um, just one second, this, Jeremy. If people change yeah. uh, the view up in the top right hand to speaker view, you'll see a very large picture of Joey. If you have it on gallery view, you're going to see an itty bitty little one. So if you want to see what he's showing, switch to uh, speaker view and it will switch automatically over to him at a larger, larger size. Go ahead, Joey. Yeah, uh, we put a movie poster in this, uh, but this is uh, a big piece of glass from the Sky Streak. Uh, I think the one that's right near the back of the wheels uh, because it was laying there um, and I all intact and we put a movie poster in it and we display it that way. But it's, I think the glass that appeared on the section where the roller wheels were on the back um, uh, I'll move on to uh, the new, uh, the, uh, the United States Pavilion, which we, uh, many, many people on the site, I'm sure we all met each other when we were kids because we probably bum shoulders uh, being in there. And I often call that place the best haunted house uh, a kid could have. And uh, you were talking about the track section of the big grandstand ride. Uh, this might be a part of it. Uh, it looks like uh, one of the big iron plates that we found near the area of the, uh, the, the, um, the, the ride. Um, I believe I saw the ride actually, and it was filled up with junk. They had filled it with all sorts of debris. And it looks like a robot because my daughter uh, had uh, decorated it and it hung outside our house for a long, long time. <laughs> Uh, this is another section of the United States Pavilion you saw last week. Uh, what is it? I don't know, but we picked it up off the floor. Um, you were talking about the debris. These are pieces of the United States Pavilion uh, with, the, with the dirt still on it. And the dirt has calcified and turned into a combination of iron and rock. So. What are these? We don't know. We just picked them up and uh, bent my bicycle. My bicycle handlebars were bent. Um, uh, my dad had to buy me uh, two or three sets of them over time. <clears throat> um, this is the very first piece I ever got out of the United States Pavilion. It's the smallest piece. And it's the piece that we bring back when we uh, gather in the park and we do a little ceremony that reunites it with the site. And I took this out of the escalator. And we would climb the escalator up into the dark rooms, we called them. Uh, they were pitch black. Uh, you couldn't see in there at all. And even the fluttering of a pigeon's wing would send us screaming out the, uh, out the entrance again. Uh, here's a piece of fused iron from uh, United States. And um, Here's a gigantic section of iron. Again, what is it? We don't know, but it was big, heavy, and I thought I can get it into my dad's trunk. Joey, how much does something like that last piece weigh? This, this piece must weigh at least 20 pounds. Hmm. This, this is really, really heavy. Um, and we've had this, I've had this for years. And I think, uh, yeah, most of the pieces that we have some pieces that are in storage that are too big to pull out. Um, so I just took out really basically some of the uh, some of the items that I could handle. Uh, I just wanted to show you this piece is from the from New York State Pavilion. It's a um, like a cannon a cannon uh, light a cannon uh, spotlight. And I believe, we believe that this uh, 
was used for the rock concerts uh, later on. So it's probably post fair. And uh, I think Mitch had told me, but I just saw this laying in there one day, uh, probably 1979. And I just walked out with it. I said, this is pretty nice to have. So, uh, but I believe it was done for the events, for the concerts that they held there. Um, this is a piece of the Singer, Singer Bowl when they were doing some renovations on it recently. And I went under, like under a, uh, a stair, a staircase and just pulled this out of the ground. And uh, I'll end with, um, well, there's two more. This is uh, an electrical insulator that uh, comes from the press building. In back of the press building, there were these giant concrete baffle plates that they used in case there was an explosion. There was lots of uh, electrical equipment behind the precinct, uh, behind the former press building. And when they were doing renovations on the Grand Central, a lot of this stuff was laying around. So I, um, I saw this when I took it and how I got out of the park holding an electrical insulator without having the parks guys stop me is a miracle. And uh, the last piece I'll show you is back to the New York State Pavilion. It's a piece of the staircase going up the towers. So, so you're, anyway. the reason, you're the reason nobody can get up there now. <laughs> Anyway, thanks, Bill. I appreciate it, and I, I hope you all enjoyed it. No, it was great, Joey. I mean, it's it's the sort of thing, you know, it's, it's so tangible. Carol and I were talking the other day, uh, you know, joke all the time about cleaning stuff up, and I was in the garage, and we found an old box of seashells, and we were just, you know, thinking about, oh, the trip we got that on, and she has a whole bunch of rocks that we've taken, and you know, written on it that this came from Ireland or this one came from Maui or this one came from Austria or whatever. And, you know, it, you look at it as a bunch of rocks, but it's the, it's the memories that the rocks represent that, you know, you, you think about that so much, uh, you know, uh, the giant piece of rusty steel or whatever. But yeah. then when we build the New York State Pavilion or the, New, or the U.S. Pavilion, I guess Joey's the guy that's got the molds. <laughs> and I'll tell you something, I know a lot of people don't like the demolition part, but um, I think the demolition um, uh, makes you appreciate like a building that you'll see walking down your street uh, that's old and decrepit and ready to be torn down. And I think it makes you appreciate uh, what we still have. So anyway, thank you so much. So, yeah, so Joey, you it to us. That was so, cool. Joey, I, I got a comment for you, Joey. That, that yeah. piece of metal, the piece of metal with the calcified soil on it, that must take a long time for that to occur. Could it be that that's a piece of a remnant from the 39 fair that got buried in with the debris? Uh, it could be, but I, I saw the, uh, this is when they were doing, they were doing renovations. Uh, they were building the Arthur Ashe Pavilion. And uh, these pieces, I think I posted pictures on the site. These pieces were sticking out of the ground. So I um, slid my small little body under the fence and just grabbed these. And I scratched up my arms doing it. But there um, has to be has to be pieces from 1939 on that same area too. It could be, it could be. But um, whatever it is, it's the foundation of the pavilions coming back to say hello to the world one more time before <laughs> they were reburied. Do you have another room with remnants of the World Trade Center too? No, I don't. No, I don't have any of that. No. Well, the New York City Pavilion a number of years ago did a major renovation and they had actually written a paper about when they were digging uh, into their uh, building footprint to put in, I think believe it was another elevator that they were coming up with all sorts of debris from the 39 fair uh, as well, pieces of broken tile and crockery and that sort of thing. Now I saw in the chat, uh, Glenn Barker was asking about going back to the site with a metal detector. If you do go walk around Flushing Meadows Park with a metal detector, you are very, very likely to get a visit from the NYPD. They do not yeah. want people to start digging up the park left and right. Now, I thought about if he wore a vest and he said something about, you know, parks, archaeological crew, people would probably think it was okay. But if you walk yeah. out there with a metal detector and a shovel, they're going to be uh, jumping on you real, real quick, particularly... <laughs> 
you know, people, I think if they dug a hole, it'd be one thing, but people tend to dig holes and not fill them back in. So if, if you can uh, carry a clipboard, second, Jim, uh, people had asked in the uh, quick, uh, chat about the uh, Lincoln figure from Illinois. Uh, Disney had built a second Lincoln figure and moved that out to Disneyland during the 65 season of the fair. More advanced than the uh, one they had originally built for the, uh, uh, the fair itself. So there was no need to take the Disneyland figure and put it on display. It was literally taken, brought back out to uh, Disney and it was in a crate in a warehouse for years. And I think some people like Glenn uh, mentioned about coming across and finding it. It's the one that's been uh, put on display at the Disney parks in years uh, since. The current Disney uh, Lincoln figure is built by Garner Holt, which somebody mentioned in the chart, an outside uh, company that also, uh, if you had been down at Disney World, you saw their Wicked Witch of the West, very uh, uh, lifelike figure. So Garner took what Disney's done with uh, audio animatronic and taken it to a whole new level Disney being smart keeps going to Garner and uh, getting figures from him for some of these things. So uh, the, the figure that you can see, if you go to the, the I think it's down, still down at Disney World, is the uh, Lincoln figure from the fair. It was never reinstalled or reused uh, after it was taken out of the fair. Jim, you had something? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, you can get a, a, a city permit to bring a metal detector and and to dig in the in in the, on those grounds we we actually were doing some digging over by by the uh travelers pavilion now the the stuff that was dug up by that elevator for the new york city pavilion since that building was built there for the 39 fair anything you dig under that building would be stuff from when it was an ash dump so being that you saw little pieces of tile and things of that sort. That was actually not from the 39th fair. That was remnants from the garbage dump that was underneath that building. Good point. Excellent point, Jim. Thanks. <clears throat> oh, by the way, uh, Carol just stopped in, Joey, and uh, we were talking about, thank God she collects seashells and not structural steel. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just wanted to add something. Um, Joey was showing stuff in the New York Pavilion, and I have the P from peak skill from the, uh, the map. In the early 2000s, I'd heard on the, um, online that there was a hole in the fence of the New York State Pavilion. And I found it and crawled in and found a bunch of loose pieces. And I had taken a picture of the map in 1978 uh, with peak skill in it. When I went back in the early 2000s, and I found that same section. The P was loose, so I picked it up, stuck it in my pocket, and brought it home, and I still have it. That's uh, it's neat. That's yeah, neat. I mentioned earlier, I had uh, stopped at the fairgrounds somewhere in the uh, 70s. I was driving a, a girl from uh, college into uh, Queens and uh, dropping her off, and uh, I had to go pick her up the next uh, Sunday to drive back, and I got there early and said, oh, the Unisphere, I haven't been there in years, so I, uh, I just literally drove into the park. There were no barriers or anything to keep you from driving around. And I went up to the New York City Pavilion, or New York State Pavilion, and as I mentioned, they were using the, the fairgrounds to dump garbage, and the entire Texaco map was probably covered in 30 feet of garbage. It was like, I remember standing there, this was about 71 or so, 72 maybe, thinking that 10 years ago, this was the greatest place on the planet Earth, and now it's a garbage dump. And then I had not gone to the fairgrounds for, for a long time. I moved to California, which kind of slowed down my visits. But I was working in Manhattan one day, and all of a sudden they announced that all the meetings we have today are canceled. Uh, come back tomorrow. So I, I went back to the hotel, got my camera, took the 7 train out to Queens, and spent a day. It was 1987, wandering through the fairgrounds. And the tent was open, and I could go in and walk around. And I saw, like you said, the... Uh, uh, you know, the, the map and everything, there were pieces of it lying there. And I, I, my town was uh, still there. And if I had a chisel, I probably would have taken it. But that was mm -hmm. what started that visit in 87 was like, all of a sudden, wow, this, this thing's still here. And I started collecting and the mania has gone on for the last, uh, you know, close to 40 years now. 
but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's amazing the stuff that was just lying around. Somebody just asked how long after the fair the uh, unisphere illumination was functional. Hardly at, uh, at all. They uh, basically, you know, uh, started selling things off. The lights that were used to illuminate the unisphere were on towers. Those towers were cut down. Uh, mentioned a week or so, a couple of weeks ago, the lights were actually used to light up the stage at Woodstock later on. So uh, they they did not last very long out there at the fair. I don't know when the cables were cut for the um, uh, light fixtures inside the Unisphere lighting up the world capitals, but the towers were taken down very quickly after the uh, fair ended and, and you know all the lighting systems sold off. Tom said, I don't think people would be interested in three rolls of photos of token site in 89. Yeah, sure. Love to see him, Tom. Uh, like I said, I was out there in 87, you were in 89. And uh, I, I think people get a real kick out of seeing how you know things have changed over time, particularly stuff like the uh, New York State Pavilion in uh, you know 89 looks very different than the New York State Pavilion as it did today. Still had the concrete on the base of the uh, 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 the bottom side of the, the observation towers, which has been taken off because it was falling down, stuff like that. So if you do get the chance to post it or on one of these chats, if we do a free for all, if you'd like to uh, share it, I, I'd love to see them. Now the fountain, somebody's asking that they're uh, restored uh, for the fair. Yes and no. Some of the fountains do operate like they, they, the, they redid the pump rooms and everything for the Unisphere fountains. They could turn them on full blast. They don't because of liability. As I showed in the one picture, right after the fair ended, uh, when there were no Pinkerton guards to tell you to stay out of the fountains, it's a hot day. You don't have a swimming pool. You jump in the fountains. So they've really cut back the, the whole fountains. They are having a new thing they've spent millions of dollars on for a misting system and some sort of water park, <clears throat> excuse me, which is supposed to be open for this uh, park season. And uh, I guess we'll see how well that all goes. But most of the fountains, like I said, the, the only one I found in the Astral Fountain was the first day the park opened to the public. I never found pictures of that on again after that. And they later cut all that stuff out and turn it into a skateboard park. So Astral Fountain's gone. Uh, almost all the fountains in the fairgrounds, uh, I think, are non-functional. The ones at the New York City Pavilion, I don't think I've seen them operate out of the uh, 80s. Uh, you know, So again, a good 30 years for those, unfortunately. Anybody else have chunks of the fair besides Joey? Hey, Bill. Jim, yeah. Uh, actually, I think that was, I don't, you were really going to the gym or? Okay, yeah. I, I'll go. Uh, although I have a lot of junk and debris, one thing that would be interested, interesting is this, re, this relay panel here. Um, wow. The Lecos that, that uh, Joey was showing before, that one Leco, they, they were on the two towers that were on either side of the stage. And they were able to push one button and have all of them come on at once. So you had to energize one breaker panel from a, from a low voltage switch. And that switch would pull in these two relays. This was for tower one and tower two. These would pull in and, and energize those two lighting towers. Um, we, we had to pull this out when we were doing some electrical work to run some security lights in the building. Jim? Yeah. Are you, are, are you talking about they powered the uh, these lights? Right. Now you see the white paint, the yellow, is there any yellow paint still on that? Uh, yes, there is. Um, because see, they were all yellow originally. That was yellow. So if you get American cheese yellow and paint that, it'll match, it'll be what it was. It was American cheese yellow by Benjamin Moore. Okay. That's what we paint the pavilion with now. And, and there was a right. whole cluster of those on each tower. Okay. Ron, That's fantastic. Ron Hamill, did you uh, have something? I thought I saw you waving. That's a picture I took in 74 behind me. That's, still That's had the great. roof on it, huh? Yeah. And it had pieces of the plastic all, uh, scattered all around the ground. I wow. walked through. That's pretty neat. 
Yeah, I had a picture. I, I don't know where it went today. Uh, uh, that I wanted to show that there was still some of the artwork still hanging on the New York State Pavilion, you know, during the construct of uh, the demolition thing. And again, you think the artists would have been real interested in coming in and getting it and taking it home, but you know, stuff just left hanging there forever until finally somebody finally took it off. So again, you, you do a piece of artwork for the fair and now the fair is being torn down. Imagine you get into who actually owns it and what can you do with it and how it went. But, you know, uh, Mitch and Stephanie, you know, they're, they're helping the Queens Museum uh, restore a phone booth. This fellow, David Warner, the guy that took the, uh, a lot of the black and white pictures we showed today, he literally came into the fairgrounds with a truck, a torch, and some friends. They cut off one of the phone booths, the serpentine phone booths, loaded on the truck and drove out. And, you know, it's like I joked years ago, you wear a hard hat and carry a clipboard. People assume you know what you're doing. You walk in, you say, I'm here for the phone booth. Oh, okay, over there. You know, you, you didn't say, I'm here to steal the phone booth. I'm just here for the phone booth. So you think about all the things that were out there that you said, Hi, I'm here for the Carousel of Progress. You know, in a big enough truck, somebody probably would have let you take it. So all sorts of bits and pieces. Like I said, the night, literally the night the fair closed, somebody stole all the bells out of the Belgian village. I wow. mean, so somebody had their mind, their their eyes on that from day one that they were going to go get it. You think when you know those things came crashing down, you know, six stories to the ground, somebody would have heard something, but. No, you know, I guess you pay off enough people and nobody hears anything and, you know, your truck goes out the gate. But uh, they, they did a lot more inspection of trucks during the construction phase uh, than the demolition stuff. And there are reports of people saying they showed up and my escalator was gone. Does anybody know where it went? You know, stuff like that. So it's a, uh, it must have been a real free for all in a lot of places, but the Fair Corporation probably didn't care. It, if it was gone, it was gone. One less thing to worry about. But it is sad. I mean, you think about it, you know, for all of us that worked for Disney, the thought about, okay, we're going to, you know, take Disneyland, build it, and then two years from now, you know, 12 months of operation, we're going to tear it all back down. You know, it, it's just, it's tr tr tremendous activity to think about design it, build it, operate it, and shred it within a year, you know, a year's worth of operations. So, oh, my, my mail must be here. <laughs> So let me yep. balance myself while she goes off. <laughs> hey, Bill, I was curious. You mentioned that the railing around the uh, fountain of, uh, or the pool of industry where the fountain of planets was, uh, that all that railing's still there. I had heard someone told me that the, the benches in the park in that area are all original too. Is that correct? Do you know? I'm sorry, Don, I missed part of that. Uh, and somebody asked, what kind of dog is that? Sounds like a terrier. Yeah, there's two of them, and they're, they're both uh, part terrier. So, I'm uh, sorry. What was your question, Don? The question was: you you mentioned that the railing around the pool of industry is still there, and I've seen that. Someone told me that the uh, benches around in that area park are still uh, original to the fair as well. Is that correct? Do you know? Yeah, uh, there's all sorts of different things were mentioned. Uh, like I mentioned, they had uh, cut off the top of the street lights. Jim Brown mentioned in the chat that the, uh, the poles of the street lights now are not original, that they uh, are different ones. I believe that when the park first opened, they were still using them because they still had the numbers on them and they could tell them where to go, but they've replaced things. Some of the benches are still original. Uh, some of the fiberglass slats they've replaced. There's actually people who go online and Jim and some of these people know it much better than I do. Which benches have original slats, which ones have replacements, but a lot of the things like the railings around the, uh, the, the uh, you know, fountains, that sort of thing, the, or if you go across the bridges, uh, you know, the, the shot that I have the bridge with the bajillion people on it, uh, you go across there, the railings and everything are still there from today, but you can look down into the concrete and see where all the uh, uh, holes were that they had mounted all the flagpoles going around. So for a little geek like myself, you can walk around and just, you know, you, you go through where the turnstiles were, come in the main entrance, you walk in and there's the bolt holes in the ground where the turnstiles and the ticket booths used to be bolted down. So it's, it's just kind of neat to walk through there and see all these uh, kind of ghostly, you know, memories of, of the past. 
Yeah, yeah, my wife is probably going to uh, come after you later because I've taken her through the parking lot. I think these are still the same matches. I think these are still tricky fountains. Now I can look for bolt holes too. So <laughs> she'll probably never want to speak to you. <laughs> you know, it, it was really bizarre though. You know, you, you go out, uh, somebody a year, a couple of years ago, this is where you get into the really silly things. The, you had the railing going across the bridge and one of the caps was missing off the end of the railing and somebody could see something that was stuffed in there. And they came back a week or so later with a piece of wire and were pulling stuff out. And it turned out for years, people have been stuffing things into this open railing going across the bridge. And then, you know, as it's been pushed in there, stuff had been, you know, wadded in. So they were like, you know, flyers from some rock concert from 1972 or something stuck into this thing on the bridge. and. I can imagine everybody else, you know, going to the park for the day and seeing this guy excavating all the stuff that people had jammed in this hole in this thing in the bridge. But hey, <laughs> it's why we're all sitting here on a Saturday looking at pieces of buildings being shredded, right? <laughs> uh, Jim, Jim Brown. I have a question for uh, for Jim. Yes, I'm on now. Yeah, Jim, uh, have they ever done ground penetrating radar to find the underground home? No, um, they, first of all, get that radar equipment in there would be very expensive. It's very expensive mm -hmm. to rent that. But, but as far as the underground home is concerned, we really do think that the concrete bunker is probably still there, but everything in it was taken out and the roof caved in so it wouldn't cave in on its own later. It was filled up with backfill and debris and whatever. It could be World's Fair demolition debris, whatever. It's all filled in. There's now trees planted on that. And I have a feeling the reason they put all those trees there in that one area is to discourage people like us from trying to convince them to let us dig because what well, they can say, but we have trees there now. You cannot dig there now. Right. <laughs> Yeah, Dr. Lori Walters had tried to convince the Parks Department to let her bring in ground penetrating radar, and they turned her down, saying it would be too disruptive, you're not going to find anything anyway, and we don't want to encourage people to start digging holes in the park. I remember a couple of years ago, I was back visiting, and uh, they were doing some work, and it, it, somebody mentioned earlier about highway expansion, that, and it was right uh, at the uh, bridge to the, uh, over right near where the uh, Ford Pavilion would have been and uh, crossing over into the park. And there was a huge pit and you could look across the construction fence and see all sorts of colored stuff in the ground and probably pieces of old tiles and plates from when either it was a landfill or you know left from the uh, 39 fair. But I didn't have the time and wasn't in the mood to get arrested that day, but it was real, real tempting to just think, oh, nobody's looking, I could go in there. But I figured I'd stand out like a sore thumb. Then I also figure, what am I going to do to get on a plane to take it home with me? So, say, Bill, do you know why did they remove all the luminaires just to replace them with permanent streetlights? Why did they just put in permanent streetlights from day one? Well, for the fair, uh, uh, the, they wanted the luminaires because it's colorful, modern. They had speaker systems and that, but they didn't want them from the fair for uh, uh, day one because they don't look like a traditional New York City light. They, they wanted to take out the garishness of the park, the multiple colors. And they were also very big and, and higher up. So they, they didn't want that amount of massive amount of illumination at night. They wanted a more subdued lighting effect that they have in, in the park. So they were never planned to stay in the park past uh, the fair days at all. There's uh, another thing about the luminaires. They use special flat fluorescent lamps that uh, uh, had a, a rather short life. And uh, because it was hard to seal them uh, like an ordinary fluorescent tube. Uh, so anybody who got a luminaire was soon to have a problem uh, getting those fluorescent panels cut because they stopped making them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Everybody that has them today is converted into something, you know, more modern, you know. Today, of course, you throw LEDs or something, it would be great. But yeah, they have that flat panel lamp that kind of, you know, weaved all around. Uh, GE made them and then as 
Wayne said, stop making them real fast. Were any of the pavilions thrown down by accident with overzealous demolition crew? I can imagine somebody coming in and saying, well, we took down the wrong pavilion. <laughs> no, I, I, there are stories that people were taking pieces of other people's pavilions and then, you know, whether it was intentional or accidental, I don't know, but I don't think anybody, you know, said, hey, you know, where did the Ford pavilion go last night? Uh, you know, but, you know, again, pieces, where did the bells go last night? Beats me, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it was funny because a couple of years ago, there was a story in the paper about some guy that came back from vacation, their house was gone. And uh, they had, you know, turned out that the builders, uh, the demolition crew had gone to the wrong address. They had been, gotten a contract to tear down a house and, uh, you know, they tore it down. And then, uh, you know, the uh, people said, well, how could they not notice that everything was still inside the house, all the dishes and everything? Well, as they looked into it more, it turned out it was a neighbor that hated the first guy that had hired somebody to tear down the, the, the neighbor's house when they were gone on vacation. So you can imagine if you go on vacation, you come back and there's just an empty lot where your house was and you, a vindictive neighbor had, had paid somebody to tear the whole damn thing down. Yeah, don't worry about everything aside. It's my parents. They don't want it anymore. Just tear it down. Yeah, but look so, what you uh, save on property taxes. <laughs> what's that? You'd save a lot of property taxes now. Oh, God. <laughs> Got to buy some more tissues. Yeah. yeah it, again, it's sad to see it all torn down. But again, this was all it, it was all intended to be torn down at the very beginning. It's unfortunate when you think about like Expo 67, that they were able to get another 10 plus years out of their World's Fair. Uh, again, with temporary structures, they kept it open and everything that, you know, if New York had, uh, you know, kept it going. But in reality, you know, um, you know, how would it have done over 10 years? Um, you know, we're going through the issue right now. You know, uh, they're big controversy. They're updating the Snow White, Snow White ride at uh, Disneyland. And people are yelling, screaming, it's too scary, not scary enough or whatever. The, the thing with the World's Fair, if you had kept that open, you would have had to update it because after X number of years of people seeing the Triumph of Man, people would want to have seen something else. So after X number of years of seeing the Tower of Light, people wanted to see something else. So unless you have a, a huge organization that comes in and updates these things and keeps them going and everything, it's a, um, it's a, it's a real challenge. The other thing was that almost all these pavilions, like I mentioned before, things like Ford, survive because the companies put so much of their advertising budget into the uh, uh, operation of the pavilion for that particular you know, two-year span that they didn't have the money to keep going and doing that because you know if you kept year after year after year doing the Ford Pavilion, you wouldn't be putting ads into other things for Ford and stuff. So it was a real short lived phenomena, but uh, one that I think really made a, a big impact on a lot of us. How much of the space park remains today? Uh, not a lot. It had gone totally derelict, fallen into absolutely terrible shape. And then they uh, took uh, it apart. And I think there's about, what, three rocket sets in the park today? Is that right, Jim? Yeah, yeah three. And then uh, uh, the part of it's inside, too. They took the uh, uh, Mercury capsule, which you mentioned was the uh, uh, real Mercury, the first Mercury capsule ever launched was in the park. They didn't realize it was a real Mercury capsule. And that's inside the uh, Hall of Science uh, today. Most of the, uh, the displays uh, were just so rotted they had to just carry them off. So the whole space park, uh, you know, with all the great signs we saw before about space exploration and everything is gone. There's a fellow that did a thing on uh, his visit to the space park somewhere in the 70s. Uh, he and his brother got in there and just wandered around and it's just all the NASA displays are falling on their side and uh, really a, a, a sad sort of, uh, you know, visit. But uh, the Hall of Science is great to, to go to today. Do you know anything about the discussion for the Third World's Fair in 1989 on the same site? Yeah, uh, you know, there was talk about doing that. And by that point in time, you ended up with a couple of things. One, nobody had the money for it. And the second thing was the people in Queens rightfully did not want their city park torn down, ripped out all the trees. Like Jim mentioned, the trees on top of the uh, underground world home. You'd have to decimate everything that had been planted in the in there and tear it all out, and then you know, two years later, tear it all down again. So 
I don't think we're ever going to see another World's Fair. I mean, they had talked about uh, doing a, a, a big Olympic park there and, uh, you know, changing the lake into a, 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 a big regatta thing to do the Olympics when New York was trying to get them. And they were going to put a giant velodrome in Flushing Meadows and everything. And everybody in Queens just started screaming bloody murder. They did not want the Olympics held in, in Queens. So it's... Uh, has anything been done with restoring what's left? Yeah, the New York State Pavilion is right now going through a, uh, what they're calling a stabilization phase. Um, lots of been arguments going on about that pavilion for the last 50 years, uh, what should be done with it. And the city of New York finally decided to put some money into it to stabilize it. Um, and the, the big issue is you have the towers, the three uh, cylinders that have the towers on top, and then you have the tent of tomorrow next to it. They're built of two totally different structure um, uh, techniques. Uh, and, and Jim, uh, you guys correct me anywhere I go wrong in this because I know I certainly will. But the tent of tomorrow is basically, um, you've got the steel, the, the concrete columns going up that hold the rain where the roof used to be. And then you've got a cement block building that goes around at the base of those towers. I think it's safe to say that the cement block building is probably beyond most uh, repair. The, yes. the foundations for that have really sunk. You get in there, there's tremendous cracks in the walls of the building and that. But they really put a lot of time and effort. We showed in, uh, I think, a week or two ago about the building of the fair, but steel pilings and everything that were being put in to hold up the, uh, the structure itself, they weren't put in to hold up the, the tent. So the city is now, in, in these big arguments, they've gone in, they've done all sorts of excavations over time trying to figure out how much of these pilings were steel pilings, how much were wood pilings, how much were treated, untreated, uh, how much was rotted below the water line above it and, and all sorts of stuff. So Jim, any thoughts on, on, on any of that you know, salvage yeah. work they're doing? Yeah, basically you're correct and pretty much correct in all that. The, the, the work that's being done now, well, it's, there's, I think there's some, it's wood pilings under the 16 columns steel pilings under the towers and amazingly the ones under the the 16 columns for the tent of tomorrow amazingly they're holding out those towers are really strong and stable there's no problem with those with those 16 columns uh what what the scaffolding you're seeing now is for is we're replacing all the electrical system in the towers for nighttime illumination of the towers and the tent of tomorrow. The 16 columns will have lights coming up inside of them so that they'll light up at night. There'll be flood lighting up on the, the yellow crown. And there will be, and on the towers, all the cement decks are being replaced. All the drainage system around the building is being upgraded. Um, a lot of electrical panels being replaced. The stairways of which Joey has a tread to, now I know why we can't get up there so easily. But the the stairways Sorry. are all being ripped out, and uh, all new stairways are being put in. The the Sky Street elevators are not going to be fixed. The because well, first of all, the, it's not going to be brought up to the condition where we would need it to let the public go up there. But it's more for our. It's going to be a modern ruin. It's going to be something like the Eiffel Tower or the parachute jump in Coney Island. It'll be just something to look at. But so that's why we don't need the sky streaks. They won't go back in and they'd be too costly. Maybe someday in the future, but not right now. Say, so, Jim, I yep. suspect that those 16 concrete columns aren't nearly as sturdy as you think. They've been sitting on wood pilings in saturated soil for 50 years and left to their own. They would have yeah. started leaning and tilting. And I strongly suspect that being tied together by the ring girder is what's holding them upright. And yes, it is. If it wasn't for that, they'd be leaning all over by now. Oh, probably. But um, what, my point was that they're, that they're stable enough with the, with the steel, you know, frame, top the ring to order. make it where we don't have to take them down. They are safe. What it, what, to, to address Bill's comment, the, the, the mezzanine structure that's in the tent, which is structurally separate from the tent itself, that structure is completely falling apart. The steel frame is holding up. It's sagging in places, but it's holding up. But the, the cement blocks are caving in. 
that's why we're not allowed to let the public in there. We're not going to have any more tours. You know, the open days where the people come in and see the building and see our exhibits. We can't do that anymore because the walls are, some of them are leaning over, over by the food, by the restaurant area. That wall looks like it's ready to come, come caving in. Why, why do you yeah. suppose the tenant tomorrow was oval rather than circular? Um, just a design thing. It's more interesting. It, the the inner the inner area around the mezzanine is a circle, and the and the tent itself, the sixteen columns, are in an oval. I think it was just Philip yeah. Johnson's being creative. Very nice design. Jim, are the sky streaks still on site, or were they taken? No, out? they've been removed with the current demolition to ready it for the new work. There was demolition to pull out all the rusty stuff in the basement, the motors, relay panels, all that, and those Sky Street elevators. I don't know where they went. We're not sure of that. I tell you, going down to the basement a number of years ago, that was a real kick seeing all those electrical <laughs> panels and everything else. Yeah. What was really scary was going down there and seeing a lit light bulb, realizing there's <laughs> power in that area. And water everywhere. I mean, it was. I, I was very careful not to touch anything that looks like it could conduct current. Well, we still need power in there. I mean, before this renovation, to run the uh, the airplane beacon up on the on the top. Right. There's a separate panel down there just for that. The other stuff with the elevators. That's all de-energized. Yeah, I wasn't going to take a chance. <laughs> <laughs> and there's water. It's flooded out or what? Yeah. That's another part of what they're doing now is getting rid of that flooding problem. But it was flooded. You wouldn't want to touch anything down there anyway. <laughs> yeah, are they putting a sump pump in? I'm sure they are. I'm not, I don't have all, all the specs on what's being done, but that's, I'm, I'm sure there needs to be a sump pump down there. Right. Somebody in the chat asked if they restore the Titan. Yeah, they, uh, they did a really nice job. They took the rockets off site took them back in some cases to um, the factories that actually built them. Others, they took them to a museum that uh, restores things for other museums and they did a really nice job. So the rockets, if you go on and look at them today, look flight ready. Of course, they're, they're not, but uh, they, they did a wonderful job of bringing them back to life after having sat there derelict for 40 plus years. Hey, uh, Jim. I, I just noticed on the stair, on this section of the staircase from the New York State Pavilion, it's yellow. Was yeah. the original color of the stairs yes. yellow? The Philip Johnson spec on the blueprints is that any exposed steel, railing, stairways, even up on top of the towers where there's some, like some steel work and you don't even That's see it, it's yellow. Every exposed area of yellow lamps lights that's why your light was yellow anything right. metal was yellow yellow okay, right he loved right. yellow <laughs> <laughs> thanks jim <laughs> in fact okay. i some of it's still on this shirt here some yellow from working in there <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's like the navy they had the old saying if it uh, you know if it moves saluted if it doesn't move painted right you know so yeah, it doesn't move painted painted yellow well thank everybody for joining again bittersweet to see it all come uh, come tearing down but it was uh you know again did exactly what it was supposed to do i mean that we had shown two weeks ago the pictures of the uh, park in between the uh 3964 fair had fallen into real dis uh, use of uh, not getting a lot of people going out there because the physical plant was in such bad shape put the World's Fair into place, uh, tore it down. And someone was asking online, you know, uh, oh, nobody goes to the park anymore. I said, no, no, we all know. If you go to the park in the summer, it's a very, very popular park. Uh, I mean, I think it's got to have more uh, soccer games going on per square mile than basically any other place on the planet. Uh, and people love it. You know, you go out there. I mean, I go out in the back there for a visit. I just love to go into the park in the summer get a Mr. Uh, Softy ice cream and, you know, wander the grounds and people love it. So uh, Robert Moses, the uh, old SOB pulled it off. He got his park and it never turned out to be as grand as Central Park, but uh, it's, it's a real nice park. Uh, I think people enjoy going out there today. 
which is why they fight rightfully so. I mean, you know, it, it'd be like if we had a somebody wanted to do a World's Fair uh, here in uh, LA and they said, oh, let's tear down Griffith Park and put in a World's Fair. People would be up in arms. Matter of fact, I, in, in my massive house cleaning project, I just came across a big thing where people wanted to put a World's Fair in LA in 1989 and it was not real well received. Because again, whose park are you going to tear down to go put this thing in? So uh, that's why so many of them have been in abandoned railroad yards and uh, you know other shipyards and you know uh, industrial wastelands because they wanted to clean them out. And and that's what they did in '39, right? It was a garbage dump turned into a park. Well, wasn't Flushing Meadow already a popular park between the two World's Fairs? Not as much, or no, they had not really done anything to maintain it. They they basically tore everything down and walked away. So there were really no uh, baseball you know, fields or soccer fields. There were just dirt fields out there and nothing really to attract people to come out. And they let it get really rotted. So um, the, the walkways were not safe. The street lights didn't work. So uh, at night, you couldn't go into the fair at all. Uh, people talked about, uh, uh, you know, it was overrun by muskrats and uh, other things running all over the place. And at night, there was no lighting, so you couldn't do anything. I don't know if I would want to go into Flushing Meadows Park too much at night myself these days, but I wouldn't want to go into Central Park. I wouldn't want to go into Griffith Park, almost any park at night. But yeah, back in the, the pre-64 days, it was a black abyss at night because none of the street lights worked anymore. Yeah, that explains why there was no resistance to building the 64 fair. Right, yeah. Yeah, uh, Tom, not sure you need another rabbit hole to get infinitely lost in. Ah, that's the trouble. This stuff becomes, oh, where do you go next? Next week, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing, but I did have an interesting thought that if I can pull it off, I have to do a whole bunch of video editing to uh, uh, do it. But I, uh, I will not state for sure what it's going to be until I'm sure I can find the time to do it. Two weeks from now, we're going to have... Um, uh, uh, Charles Abar again showing what it was like in the, uh, the roller skating rink and that. Uh, I'd like to do another uh, time going around where people have collections, things they'd like to show, not just from the 64 fair, but from any particular fair. So if people like Tom had pictures from their visit in 89, or if other people have pictures from other fairs, uh, I just thought we do a, a a uh, go around the room sort of thing. So appreciate folks joining and uh, hope everybody has a, a great Saturday. Thank you so much. Yep. And, uh, and thank you, Bill. Thanks, thank Bill. You. And all the pieces of twisted burnt metal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bill, the show was real boss. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I saw that written there, all I could think was back in the days of the WMCA good guys, you know, right. and they'd be on the radio. And everybody would be talking how boss that is. And I think boss was probably just a half a generation before me that I came along, things started being cool, not boss. You know, so when I saw the boss thing, like I said, that, that, that was what all the seniors were saying in high school when I was a freshman, I guess. And we were, you know, boss radio, exactly right. So I, I came by and we were starting to talk about things being cool. And then, you know, I don't know when Rad came into be, you know, being, but. I guess you could start matching, uh, you know, things by the graffiti people put on walls, you know, so, but I, I just love that sign about, you know, uh, again, you know, the, the whole thing is being all torn down. People bring it back, please, you know, yeah. if, if only they could. Well, thanks all. Appreciate folks joining and uh, we will see you uh, for something next week. I think it's going to be fun if I can find uh, the ways to get all the video clips that I want to get and put together. So thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Bill. Bill. See you later. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye-bye.